Um, I remember when I first started playing guitar, um, I, I discovered early on that mixing amplifiers was the thing to do because not, every amplifier is made obviously differently, but they're based on a different kind of engineering. So they, you have like this British kind of distortion, you have an American distortion, you have um, a blues kind of clean, or you have like the, the, the full like new wave kind of chimey. You have all these different types of sounds, you know. So early on I started mixing amps. Um, and I, I usually when I, in the studio, in the live setting, it's always, a, it's two different things, but the normally if I wanted a really big modern rock sound, I was always mixing um, a Marshall and a Mesa Boogie together. That was always, that's always kind of like the two, the perfect blend of two different things that makes a big modern distortion sound. But as I became a better guitar player, um, I started using combos and, and really doing uh, Vox AC30s and matchless chieftains and, and Princeton, uh, not Princeton, but um, twin reverbs from Fender. And, uh, and that creates a much more fuller kind of um, classic rock tone, but you have to be a better player to use it, you know? Um, you can't mess up as much, there's not as much distortion kind of hiding, it, you know, you're flubbing around with your fingers. Um, so now I'm, I'm at the point where I'm using combos, uh, these combination amplifiers live where I'm mixing Fender twin reverbs and these anniversary edition uh, AC30 Vox combos and but they run through um, they also I have a um, I don't use it in the studio but I use this TC electronics g-force effects unit uh, to power them now with blink I found that I don't need any effects whatsoever I got a flange you hear that like all the time I got to stop using that like it's like my one thing I could use but in a Angels and Airwaves, you know, we're using stereo delays and we're using different weird um, filter sweeps and, and a lot of different um, phasing things going on and, and, uh, and that all primarily comes from the G-Force. You could be like Edge from U2 that has like 100 pedals and 100 pieces of analog gear and any combination of something can go wrong, you know. Um, but he's, uh, he's got that system down. To me, it's a little bit too scary, you know, to do that. Um, maybe if I was at that level, I wouldn't be as scared. You have backups for backups, but uh, so I try to streamline the live concert where, where we we try and run everything um, as small and as modern as we can, so so it works like clockwork every night. I've really learned how to use um, all these different things to create tones. I look at guitars and I look at pedals and I look at I look at everything like a toolbox. It's just a bunch of weird tools that make noise. So. Um, one of the, some of the more experimental things we do is we'll run percussion or we'll run guitar stuff through or vocal things through guitar amps. And then after it's coming through the guitar amplifier, or even before, we put in some old analog pedals like micro synth pedals or something. And then, um, and then we'll, we might put even like a snare drum next to it so it's vibrating, you know, and you have a few different mics picking up the room sounds and the vibrations of the snare drum and then the guitar amplifier itself. But it might just be one guitar riff or it might be a vocal. But uh, the ambience and the weird resonance of those types of sounds mixed together is what I think is, can be really unique. I think when a band does everything in the computer, it ends up becoming, it sounds way too process sounding. So I think the more that you can use real knobs and real handmade pedals and real things made by human beings rather than software, um, you'll get a different, different sound.